Hey guys, Armor Gun here today with a bit of a treat. I put out the shooting video last on the Knight's SR15 E3 IWS Integrated Weapon System Mod O. So the shooting video was recently had this guy out the range, ran some rounds through it, gave you guys the uh, the overview on the controls and the shooting impressions. And today we're going to go in a little bit more detail about the features and specs of the Mod O system, about this Legacy Tope rifle itself, and I'll, well, I'll go through what's on the gun as well, but um, realistically we just want to talk about what makes this thing special. And for comparison's sake, we've got a Mod 1 down here with the URX 3.1 handguard. It's also got a different gas system on it. And then the Mod 2 which the with the URX 4 rail, and again, uh, the Mod 2 gas system, which is especially cool. And then another Mod 1 here for, uh, just for reference, it's got the triple tap muzzle device on it, that 14.5 dimpled barrel. These are both 14.5 uppers, by the way. This is the 11.5 CQB. It's actually the SR16 E3 upper. That was a, a treat to track down one of those. And then just to round out the wall of guns, we have an SR16 ECC. Enhanced combat carbine up top here. Again, this is with the URX 3.1 handguard system. That one's got the dimpled barrel. I I looked long and hard for this beauty, and uh, this one's got a MAMS a 7.62 MAMS device. MAMS standing for multi-axis muzzle stabilization. Uh, so the device on there. It also works with their QD suppressor system, which is very cool. Definitely uh, looking forward to getting my hands on some of those in the future. Topped off with the ZCO optic, but again, that's probably enough. We're not talking about that one today. It's a beautiful shooter. We'll talk about that one another day. Uh, this gun of the week is the SR15, again, the Moto Legacy. So we're gonna get into that one, go through the details, the specs, and what makes it special. And for your viewing pleasure and to round out the flex, we've got a M60 E4 Mod 1 on the ground, just, uh, just chilling. All right, guys, jumping into the Moto build here. Uh, I, I just want to cover off some of the accessories really quickly, just that way you guys can not ask a bunch of questions about them. Uh, I do have a full separate video that went over kind of kitting out this gun. I kind of do an upgrading guns series. Not that you can really, well, there's there's limited ways you can upgrade, you know, air quotes in SR15. Uh, most of the stuff I did, therefore, was cosmetic and just personal preference stuff, like swapping the furniture. Uh, the main upgrade I would have done would have just been swapping out the factory charging handle for a, a Radian Raptor, which is definitely an upgrade. Absolutely love those. Um, otherwise, we just took off the factory matching A2, which looks nice, fits with the gun nicely, but I'm not a fan of A2s. So I put in an Ergo Deluxe. And then the stock, it's got a Volter on there right now, would have come with an LMT SOP mod style stock. And uh, not that I swapped it out because I didn't like the SOP mod. I just needed to steal it for my 416 keg clone build. If you guys want to see more about this, again, link up here. And a similar style video to the upgrading that one, just where I kitted out. But this one I actually talked more about the 416 keg clone in general. And in addition to swiping the stock, I also swiped the micro backup sights from the SR16 CQB. Just to give that a little bit of a shout out as well. And then for optics, we've got the Elcan Spectre DR in FDE with matching Tenebrex ARD anti-reflection device. And then in this little unit up here, we've got the Valhalla Tactical. It's a titanium adjustable red dot sight mount. It's loose right now, but that's how you can do it. You can just, you can tailor suit it to your optic, get it right tucked in nice and flush. They make different mounts. This one's for an RMR, but again, there's different options out there. I've got a video on that thing as well. If you guys want to check it out, learn more about that system. All right, with all of that out of the way, let's actually jump into this thing. Kicking things off with furniture, I already discussed the grip and the factory stock. We've also got a Knight's kind of traditional vertical broom handle style grip, and then the CAC ribbed rail panels. All right, guys, taking a look at the receiver, we've got what's uh, largely an ambidextrous unit here. I'm just gonna prove it clear. And what's cool is Knight's was actually one of the original companies to pioneer ambidextrous controls in the lower. So they've got an ambidextrous uh, safety selector here, magazine release, which is really nicely built into the, the magazine well with the full shelf on it. And then you can see that duplicated right there. And then the bolt 
it's not 100% ambidextrous. It is, I would consider it's what I call 95%. You've got your traditional catch and release there. And then on the shooting side or the, the right-handed side, you've just got a ambidextrous release, which is actually a really nice, I really like that paddle design. Another interesting feature with the Mod O's is the QD cups in the rear of the receiver. Some Mod 1 guns from what I've read also had this, but actually they, they tended to phase that out in favor of just a traditional lower and they built the QD cups into a receiver end plate. Now this receiver is 7075 T6 aluminum. I believe it's forged. At least that's what I, I got from my research. Knights doesn't include a lot of detailed information on some of these things on their site, but uh, nonetheless, you can also see this is a painted finish. It's not Cerakote. That's why you, uh, you lose some of the paint once you open there. I think they just left it to uh, not interfere. We have what's quite nice is this scalloped trigger guard. It's enlarged for better use with gloved hands and then it's just kind of a nice scalloped feature. Standard brass deflector, forward assist. That's probably all about I can tell you with this thing. Don't mind the uh, armor, it's kind of flopping around. It's a bit loose on the mount. And guys, to round out the controls, I'll just give you a quick demonstration of that trigger. It's Knight's two-stage trigger, which is actually really nice, about a 4.5 or so pull. That's the first stage there. It's a couple mils of take up, and then boom, quite crisp. Let's check out that reset. Decent reset, but it's pretty tactile when you come right back on it. And uh, again, nice, nice pull, nice crisp break. Uh, quite good. Quite a solid factory trigger. Probably not something I would be jumping to swap out with a Geisley or something like that. Of course, we can't talk about the SR15 without going through the E3 enhanced bolt carrier system. So uh, Knights essentially expanded on the system that Carl Lewis with LMT had already developed uh, response to SOCOM's request for some more durable uh, carrier systems after they had some problems in the Middle East in the early 2000s. So Carl Lewis did some developments, I believe Knights then licensed those and further added on to them. They did some stuff with the extractor, with the bolt, the cam pin even, and that resulted in some significant enhancements to the efficiency of the operation and the durability of the system. The expense, however, was going proprietary. So now you've got, you're kind of stuck with, with Knights proprietary parts if you need to maintain this system. I'm not gonna talk about them in too great a depth. I'm gonna save that for the next video in the series, which will be the field strip and internal review. So guys, I'll show you guys the bolt face, some of the modifications that's been done to that, the extractor, the radius lugs to prevent bolt shear, and even the shrunk cam pin that's designed to leave more meat on the shaft of the bolt to further increase its durability as well. And where the bolt ends, the barrel begins, starting with the proprietary, once again, barrel extension, which again is internally radius for those lugs uh, to accept them. That continues on into a cold hammer forged barrel, chrome lined, and I believe it's a one and seven twist. I did forget to verify that. If I'm wrong, I'll throw it in the correction section in the description below. And of course it features Knight's famous intermediate gas system. Now it's an intermediate length, a little bit longer than mid length, a little bit shorter than rifle length. At least that's what uh, Knight's, just how Knight's describes it. The motto guns, or at least mine, has a gas block with a set screw or held on by set screws. From what I've researched, it is a very tight tolerance, basically designed to not let any gas escape the system. That way they can plan on all the gas coming through there, running it, and really dial it in, getting away with as small of a gas port size as possible. And that's gonna do a few things for you. One, it's efficient. It's less gas coming back into the system to foul up the action. Two, it's exerting less force on the carrier, so the carrier's not gonna run as fast, it's not gonna bash back and forth as much, you're gonna get less wear on your internals. And three, that's all gonna add up to less or less recoil for the shooter. Softer shooting platform, your muzzle's gonna be jumping around less, easier for follow-up shots and maintaining that accuracy. That barrel is tucked under one of Knight's proprietary URX handguards. This one, the Legacy Guns, featured the URX2, uh, which is, which is kind of neat in that it has this integrated front sight. I'll try and get the camera a little bit closer so you guys can see that. Pretty cool unit. It's adjustable for elevation only and uh, just with a little dial with your with your hand there and you just push the button on the opposite side and that will once again tuck back down into place. It's got rail sections on top. The URX 2.0 is a free-floated system, basically quad rail and this section also pops off if you're going to mount a grenade launcher like an M203 
to the underside. And of course, all of their 5.56 guns featured a half by 28 thread pitch, so you can put whatever, I guess, 5.56 muzzle device you want on there. This just came with a basic a flash hider. I threw a battle comp on there, or actually rather the guy that had it before me did. Uh, the 7.62 guns, the SR25s, those come with the 5.8 by 24. So again, this is that, uh, the 7.62 MAMS. Some other 5.56 devices that they have are, again, their flash hider that links up with their QD suppressor system. They have two of those. And then there's another three prong flash hider. And of course the ever legendary triple tap. All right, guys, just to close with a few final thoughts, having shot basically all these guns and the uppers and whatnot, the SR 15s are incredibly soft shooting. They're really a pleasure to shoot. And surprisingly the, the CQB, the 11.5 really soft shooting gun for that barrel length. And even just having a basic flash hider on there, I'm telling you guys, that thing is a treat to shoot. Uh, the 16 inch full length gun even isn't that much softer. I don't know if that just speaks to the system as a whole or especially just how well tuned that uh, E3 Mod 1 is. Again, the Mod 01 and 2 have different gas blocks and, and gas systems, things like that. I'll go over those in more detail in a future video when I kind of compare different generations of guns. If you want to see the legacy being shot again check out the previous video to this series if you want to see the internals in detail that'll be the next video and then i'll follow up with accuracy on these guns as well along with another video series on the sr16 cqb i'll get in uh, the 14.5s as well at some point i won't do full video series of those because it'll be kind of redundant at that point but we'll definitely go through shooting and a bit of more detail on those as well and of course that sr25 on a lighter note, check out again that uh, upgrading guns video. It was kind of fun with the with the SR15. I'll probably revisit some of these in that format as well, just to show them off some more and uh, have some fun with uh, how we kit them out. And guys, that's probably it for me for today. In case you're curious, this is a Gallo Tech wall system. I love this system. It's freaking phenomenal. We've also got our Rhino Metals safe over there. And uh, again, we'll finish off with that bonus gun, the Desert Ordnance M60. E4 Mod 1. That thing is a fun gun. That one's just semi-automatic only. We'll do a shooting, we'll do a full video series on that thing very soon here. Pretty cool unit. And again, guys, that's it for me for today. If you guys like the content, please like, share, comment, subscribe, do all the things. They all really do help. And if you really want to go the extra mile, I know I'm flexing hard with all these Gucci guns, but at the end of the day, this is just my thing and I kind of broke the bank going for all these things and uh, I'm just enjoying putting out content on them for you guys now. If you guys want to go the extra mile and support the channel please hit up patreon uh, you can dm me there as well a few other perks but uh, basically that's going to be it for today thanks a ton guys arm and gun out